I wanted to talk about my Asperger disability accommodations I just got because they're so cool. And I go to Phoenix University, I go to online school. It's a lot of work, a lot of writing. And recently I got accommodations to have extra time on assignments. And I also got books in the mail. I have books, actual paper books, which is also cool. And it's really helpful, especially the extra time. It's, I found it can be hard to keep track of time, right, with Asperger's, with myself. There's a lot of reasons why I feel like this is important, but, like, I've actually done assignments twice instead of once. I misunderstand what the assignment is and how to do it, and I'll actually have to do the assignment twice to do it right because I do it wrong the first time on what it's actually asking me to do because I like read the words wrong and think that the wrong part is important and then I write the assignment wrong so I mean there's different reasons including difficulty managing time you know my job is all over the place and it's really really helpful when I can have an extra day sometimes and it not have to mark me 10% off each day or 20% off depends on the teacher I only had disability accommodations one other time in my life, and that was at a community college, and I can do tests in a private room that was silent, just like this tiny room, and I could, if I wanted to use a tape recorder, I could in a note taker, and I tried to milk those with a psychology class in a community college, and it didn't do me any good. I, I was going to fail anyway and had to pull out. But, which is why I'm at Phoenix now. It, it's more accommodating to my disabilities in a way that I need. And it was a kind of a last resort because it's an expensive school. But, you know, there are financial aid options and stuff that I guess really suit some people. And I ended up doing it. I'm really glad I'm doing it. I've really enjoyed going to school there, you know, and having the extra time is so helpful. It's weird because it's like, I'm not usually used to talking about it with people because people don't understand, but educators, I guess, do. You know, maybe not so much teachers, but the people that are above teachers that maybe have to tell teachers what to do sometimes, because from what I've understood, teachers don't always understand it, and they have to have their arm twisted to say, no, you're giving these accommodations to this person, that's what you're agreeing to, because sometimes teachers won't do it right, and someone above them will make them do it, is what... I'm understanding with this, you know, I'm going to get more time and I'm going to have my late penalty taken off because I get to have this now and that's an agreement that they sign and if they don't do it then I tell someone and they make them take it off because it's not supposed to be there, I'm not supposed to have any late penalty now. That's pretty cool. And, you know, it's different. It's the thing that I'm finding is that it's really different at, at places like work because work people may not understand it at all. And you may not get any accommodations whatsoever, even if you really need them, and even if you really deserve them. I not long ago had someone tell me that I wasn't going to have meetings in a certain room because of what it did to me, because it was too much noise, with like this humming noise. And I wouldn't get to hear what was happening in our meeting before we'd start work, and then I'd ask my coworkers the, what the meeting was about, and they'd give me like wrong information because they didn't even really know, they weren't paying attention, and then I'd be like, with this wrong information that was important information to know and it all wouldn't have happened if I just heard the information at the right time in the first place and I was told we wouldn't meet in this room anymore that had all this loud buzzing noise but um we kept meeting there we only one time had a meeting in a different spot and we kept going right back to the same meeting point and I just thought well that was really accommodating you only changed the meeting spot one time one day great now we're back to square one what am I supposed to do now you know not everybody's always that understanding, and in a school situation, you have someone to twist the arm of the teacher. If they're not being understanding, they're not being considerate of it. It's like someone higher up knows, this is what this person needs. I don't qualify for all of the perks, though. I mean, I noticed there was like a bunch of them that I didn't qualify for, but the ones that I do are very good and very helpful, which is awesome. You know, and I waited a long time because, I don't know, I wanted to prove to myself that I didn't need them. 
but then I started to realize, like, oh crap, this class, <laughs> it's 10% off if it's one day late, and it's never going to be accepted if it's two days late. Okay, I better get this in right away, and really hightailed it to make sure that it would happen, and, and now I'm really glad that I did. I think it's important people know about it, because, you know, I know it's not something I really pursued, because it's like, I didn't really see it as an option. You know, you may not necessarily see Asperger's as a disability when you have it. You just sort of get used to certain things about it. You don't think of how there's accommodations that can make life a lot easier. But yeah, I think Phoenix University has really good accommodations and community college, maybe not so much. That didn't work out. I, I had to give up that as an option. Yes, it would have been a lot cheaper, but it didn't work out academic wise for me. I couldn't learn that way. I just wasn't going to pass. You know, give me freaking hard tests and I'll fill it no matter how hard I work. It just doesn't work with the way that I learn. But I just want to share some things about that. I hope that can help or benefit someone. <laughs> Thank you.